I want to ask you about Max Spears uh, and your relationship with him. And uh, yeah, sure I was just at during. Uh, oh my god! Wait, I stopped recording. I don't want to record. Oh, you stopped stop. recording now. I want to stop that. Oh wait, record to the computer. I want to. That's what I want to do. Okay, we're be, we're live. Hey guys, welcome to a special episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. This got thrown together last minute. But I'm so excited to have my guest on today, who I have with me is a legend in, in the UFO community. Um, I have with me Miles Johnson. He's a veteran UFO researcher from Belfast and creator of the Yeah, Irish I, I, UFOs. I, I, yeah. Uh, I used uh, the red hair. No, I was never red hair. I, I wasn't ginger either. Strawberry uh, <laughs> He's a veteran UFO researcher from Belfast and creator of the Irish UFO Research Center. In the early 70s, he's a producer of historical documentaries on pirate radio stations in Ireland for two decades, which developed as a result of massive UFO activity in Ireland from the 70s. Miles is a producer and researcher of the BASIS project, which derived from the early pioneering of the Irish UFO Center. Barry King and Lisa Williams came to Miles Johnson speaking of a secret underground base in Peasmore, Berkshire, where programmer generated life forms were being produced. The interviews that followed became the British Bases and the Bases Project was born. Miles is a pioneer in the alternative media sector and has a YouTube channel where he presents new information from eyewitnesses, ex and current military and civilian sources to people all over the world. Oh, wait, I gotta, oh, wait, I gotta shut that off. Wait, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Okay, are you there? Thanks, Miles, um, for joining me today. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. I'm very busy, obviously. Oh, no, I'm fine. It's always good to fade the microphone up. I'm very busy. Very, very busy. That's um, good, though, right? Yeah, speed is a good thing, right? I'm helping some uh, very dear friends here in Wiltshire, uh, and they're actually from Holland, and they do uh, a crop circle thing, like a 20-minute uh, little thing, and they get a lot of people to talk. Like it's, And it's in the uh, Coronation Hall in Honey Street and Alton Barnes. Uh, in the middle of the Vale of Pusey. And that's where a, a lot of the original big crop circles happen. Uh, and uh, it's just a nice sort of summer thing. They come over here. They're very, very passionate. That's and amazing. there's also a really, really nice, very well and professionally laid out crop circle exhibition center uh, in Honey Street. And uh, beside that, you've got the infamous Barge Pub, which has this sort of thing like Michael, D Michael uh, Delangelo's painting in the Vatican well there's this wonderful painting on the ceiling at the barge pub and do come over and spend lots of money on beer you can actually be abducted here for free all you got to do is buy five pints of alien abductee beer and after that you don't know what the hell you've been doing I love it anyway that's that's, that's so a bit of the fun thing you have a great sense of humor I like that I like when I can well uh, I don't take myself seriously because nobody else does and this is the basis project mug. We we change it every so often. That's yeah, so this cool. is so serious actually that uh, I mean it really is horrendous what's been going on in terms of um, secret programs and stuff like that. So I try to sort of throw a bit of humor in it. And when I do the conferences, I I try to sort of really relax it. Except when I'm flying around in a blue blue fit because something's gone wrong and i'm not maintaining my calm reserve yeah anyway. um but let's get into it like can i ask you about max spears like i mean because you got a chance to spend time with max spears i was a big fan yeah of max. i mean um, the main the main thing is this thing started with barry king in 1994 when i interviewed him about they're making aliens in a base in Peasmore, uh, which is one of the main underground, one of the underground bases. So just to put things into context, um, the reason why I continued doing this, there was another person there called Lisa Williams, and she was a multiple abductee. And these two, these two guys, Barry King and her, were part of a very, very good uh, research group called London UFO Studies. Because in East London and further out into the Thames, there's quite a big alien base right in the Thames. And a lot of the stuff would come up on the north side. Um, that's the southern shore of Essex, I think. Um, and the bottom line is that everybody comes up with these things about aliens, the UFOs, and all that sort of stuff. But the thing which sold it to me, the one thing, 
was the internecine backstabbing politics going on at the base. And if, if you've ever worked for the BBC, you'll be familiar with that. But this showed a level of knowledge way above the normal stuff. Like you see, you get abducted, you see these guys, this whatever happens and all that. So Barry King was the first person to run with this. And then a couple of years later, a guy called James Casbolt came along and he threw stones up at Barry's thing to say, hi, I was in the base that you're talking about. And the, the thing about James Casbolt, he was uh, spinning along. We haven't got all day, but he was the commander with Max and Max and James and an awful lot of other people were part of us, uh, children, which had been taken from schools. And then they were tested for all sorts of abilities. And this led to an awful lot of children, not necessarily making it. Um, uh, I think if you're familiar with the Spartans, one of the ways of sorting out the you know, the, the chaff is that they one of the children in front of the other ones would be asked to kill one of the children. So one of them would kill the other. It would be a life and death struggle, and it had to be, a, one of them had to die. And this was a way of shocking these kids into the program. So the British Super Soldier program basically used that same kind of training, and that's the kind of thing that, brought a lot of the people in and one of the bases where um we were talking about one of the entrances is a place called um um greenham common and it's actually it's closed down well it's not none of these bases are actually closed down it's actually in today it's actually used for a set for star wars but that is where max was brought in as a child uh, into the base and then he ended up in a base along with james in nelson in Canada. So this is bringing the whole Commonwealth in. And the key to this, you can't have any kind of a story unless you bring in the Nazis. And this is key to this is that um, Barry King's father found a base and the closure of World War II, the alleged closure of World War II, because World War II didn't actually finish until last week. The actual administration technically of the war only closed at the NATO meeting last week. Uh, that's the 12th of July-ish. Uh, and um, basically what happened was that uh, the Germans were making, were, he found that the Germans had A, a strange-looking aircraft, and B, these strange-looking humans. He didn't call them aliens. But it was such a shock. Uh, plus, he also got some kind of illness. So this then brought in the Americans, and the, the Americans sort of took over from that. But basically, with Project Paperclip, uh, you got the Americans got the rocket scientists with Werner von Braun and all that. The Russians got their rocket scientists. We got their genetics and psychic warfare people. We got their psyops people. And uh, Doctor Green is is one of the famous ones, and he comes up in 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 what's been going on here with the British super soldiers. And then a while back, I, I interviewed another guy called um, Dave Marrow, and he talked about the uh, training center, uh, Burnworthy Manor, where they trained these people. And uh, Sarah Adams and Matt Todd and a whole lot of others were were in this um, training base with with Matt with Max. And um, further information led to the fact that Max hadn't been trained in the after death. Uh, training but uh spinning on there's another super soldier one of the early ones in the 1950s the british were recruiting and training uh specialist soldiers which were part of a very special core one of which was called the 16 and that was a guy called john Irwin, and he was brought one step beyond death so that meant that they were able to bring you out of body educate you and train you in special fighting techniques and then put you back in after you'd been technically past death. And that's why his book, John Irwin with a U is called one step beyond the 16. And that's a really rare book. It's a really important book. And this is 1950s. 
So what we had in the 1950s was an elite military team fighting within the British Army, and they were fighting against what we would call today the cabal. So we have had a war within, embedded within our uh, military and embedded within special forces to fight what we would call today the New World Order and all that sort of stuff. And we're talking about the 1950s. But really, what's really important about that story is that the mission that John Irwin had was to get these special data banks, which were thousands of years old, and they these two of the things were kept in a special box, uh, like a like a special jewelry box or something. You know, it was velvet and it was wood and stuff, and they had these data banks which looked like uh, crystal structures, like a big iPhone with nodules and things on it because it was designed to plug into some other piece of technology. We're talking thousands of years old technology. And uh, the the special forces people, the 16, the 16, he went in on this. When they went into this base in Jaraba, which is in an area of uh, the Middle East near Israel, Jordan, I mean, that map's changed so many times. But they they went in there, took, took the base, got these data banks, and just before they they went in two flying saucers take off so we're dealing with british military forces engaging uh, as a base with a sort of a bilderberger type meeting going on there's flying saucers taking off and they're getting ancient data banks which will realign and program interdimensional gates or stargates for want of a better term so they match up in the 3d domain so you'll have the gate in in hyperspace, for want of a better term, and these these uh, data banks would program the local gate to to get through in three D because we're flying around and drifting all over the place in three D. So this this was part of technology that the British got way back in nineteen fifty nine, but they knew about these bases and they were they were they were taking out Russians and all that sort of stuff. So way back in the 1950s, you got the Russians, the Nazis, the Americans, the British, we all got special forces. It's in the Middle East. And they're getting interdimensional ancient technology for hyper jump or hyperspace gateways and stuff, which we recovered here. Um, and so that's that sort of sets the scene as to what then happened in the 90s and James and Max. And why it all went terribly, really sadly wrong in Poland. So that that sort of I hope that sets the scene. That really does. That's so that's so awesome. That's so informational. It, that that just there was a lot going on there that I could ask questions about. But I mean, like, what ended up happening with Max then? In your in your opinion, like, um, well, it wasn't there. I mean, I was there. I was at that conference. I was at my was. It was the second time. There was a couple of other super soldiers, one of whom helped paint this house. In fact, he, he left a little bit out just up there. Yeah, you see. Um, and he, he, this particular, this other super soldier, this, this super soldier, he had implants. He had pretty large ones in his brain. And a lot of the other characters have got physical mechanical implants you can see on an MRI scan and things like that. And you can pick those up with meters and stuff like that. Uh, so... Any idea that there's going to be some kind of disclosure on this from the CIA in the States, which is something happening last week, it's yeah, been going like, on in British bases. Yeah, I mean, they've been involved with reptilians, Alpha Draconis, all the other versions of the Draconis. They've been involved with the Greys, which is a dog and pony show to calm us into thinking we're going to have to help some alien race. So this is in our bases, right? So any idea that they sort of don't know about what's going on and it's out there is bollocks. It's absolute bollocks, right? Yeah. Now, the other thing that, that Max and, and these guys were doing, um, they were doing two things. They were going off world and off planet. And there's a difference there. And I'm not entirely sure which is the difference. I think off world is when they go through the gate and uh, into through a gate, for want of a better term. I'm using you know, language which may not which may not actually be technically correct, but it gets the idea across. And so they they go off world or they go off planet, and that's when you have the secret space program. 
and uh, all that sort of stuff. But crucially, what the Germans were trying to do in World War II was to interface technology with human flesh, and they weren't really able to do that. It didn't work properly. So if you think to the present day, Elon Musk, he comes from that German program via South Africa, and that's why his company is SpaceX and launching these uh, tin cans you stack up and fly into low Earth orbit and all that. But his other company is Neurotech. So this brings things right up to the present day where they want to make us into what the, the other the other term is program-generated life forms or non-human cyborg units. And that's within embedded within the whole military establishment and the whole sort of secret behind the scenes thing. That's so interesting. That's so, so Max, Max was part of that program. I think probably the time the, the time when we were all together, there was in twenty in twenty, I think thirteen, there was a second Super Soldier Summit just outside Las Vegas and Henderson. And a lot of us were there. That was the time I, I was able to get to that one. Uh, I was meant to get to the first one. And that's when we had Max and Sarah and a whole pile of others. Uh, and um, that's when uh, James and Max were together. And Kerry Cassidy did a very good interview of, with them together. And uh, that, that, that's that been on her channel for quite a while. And there's sort of no love lost between the two guys. But the important thing was that there was a whole meetup. Uh, we were all basically, um, uh, I don't remember any of this, but we were all basically taken out of our hotel rooms in the middle of the night. Uh, James Casbolt was in charge. Max was under his command. And we were all uh, there. Max and, uh, and James were there with U.S. military forces. And we were all sort of taken in for an inspection. There were two sort of medical hire trucks, U-Haul trucks, which uh, had a medical, you know, a dentist chair type thing. And we were all checked out and examined and uh, that sort of thing happened. So that brings you into the situation where in the United States, you have British super soldiers, which are trained in, in Britain, and they're involved with taking the whole, the whole lot of, I think there must've been about 20 of us there at that, that conference. And um, so the whole thing's intricately involved. And when I mentioned the, um, Nelson base where James and Max were there, uh, that involved the Germans, uh, Fourth Reich soldiers, because as I've said before, we did not, the war did not finish. World War II continued. You had the Project Paperclip situation. Uh, a gentleman called uh, Admiral Carreras, he took over and maintained uh, the Fourth Reich after the Third Reich uh, fell uh which was part of the plan so they could go nazi international and over uh, something like three hundred thousand administrators were imported into the united states the cia was created which its basic nomenclature means it's part of the austro-hungarian empire going back to the 1800s and that is why that's they wish to retain control they've always controlled the narrative on the ufo thing so right up to the present day, the same sort of things are continuing to happen. And um, that's that's really sort of what's going on. Carreras was part of what's called the DVD, which is a secret German intelligence, or going back to Prussian intelligence. Uh, so that has always been sort of in the background, like shooting down comets and blowing up ships and you know, comet aircraft. They, they didn't fail because of uh, square windows. They were being shot down to cripple the British aircraft industry, which was very successful in doing that. And uh, the United States was basically then used as a, uh, as a, as, as a means, the British empire was shut down in 1935. The United States was then used for that. The United States now has been used right up to this present time, basically as a source of resources and manpower. Uh, George Bush uh, then took over after Admiral Carreras failed. So George Bush was leading a, a, a Fourth Reich situation, uh, continuing the effects of the world, world War II, which is why America is basically being used as a, as a, as a you know, resources. And uh, right up to the present day, right up to about last week, when everything seems to have officially ceased and a new situation has now come about and uh but uh the fourth reich ended 
I was corrected by James Casbolt about when he was in jail, not too far from here. Um, uh, I think 2018, he corrected me that the Fourth Reich had been was over. I mean, th this involves Rumsfeld, all those sort of people, while they're standing there, you know, swearing to the United States are actually uh, you know, double agents. Uh, Dulles was a German asset. I mean, he, what he did, uh, uh, RMP, our, 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 our uh, government is uh, was ac was accessed by MI6, which was compromised, and our cabinet office here in, in Britain was being effectively run by uh, the secret agency because it's so secret. It's like the NSA. It's no such agency. It's no, nobody sort of, it's not, doesn't meant to exist. So that's all, uh, that's all meant to have finished. So we're meant to be under the fifth Reich, but as I say, um, as of a week ago, a lot of things have happened and a lot of stuff involving the Alpha Draconis and the other reptilian, other, other races or Draco races, something big seems to happen in the last week or two. And we are in quite a different situation. Does that make it clear? I wanted to ask you, that's something that my friend had brought to my attention. You put out a video saying that the, the queen of the hive was- The was hive awful. queen, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? And like- uh, that, That's, uh, if, well, I mean, if you look at what the hive is, excuse me. <laughs> so uh, if you look at what a hive is, it's, it's this hive mind. I mean, we've just- been uh going through a situation without getting it taken off your channel we've we've had a situation for where biological warfare has continued to be used ag against the wider population biological warfare is a signature of the dvd uh they tried poisoning me uh several times i've had a number of assassination attempts it hasn't worked so uh Poisoning is one of the, uh, you know, the potato famine in Ireland. That's a, it was all these sort of things are. If you see the way a certain bunch of criminals work, uh, they usually use the same sort of technique, the same sort of hallmarks. So biological warfare is part of that. So the bottom line is that Max, um, there was one of the people involved with the Polish conference. Uh, and he was invited over there and he did a hit, a hit piece on me to take me uh, to basically get me offside. And it's, in many respects, that was successful. I actually volunteered. Look, if I don't want to be controversial. If you've got one of the, the key people in that conference in Poland uh, has turned extremely uh, nasty. I don't want to cause a scene. So I said, look, I, I don't want to spoil your conference. So I spoke at the conference. Max spoke at the conference. It was the first time that Max actually spoke on his own because uh, when I put Max on with Sarah uh, all those years ago uh, in, in that Coronation Hall, uh, Max actually was, it was his first time, you know, pe speaking publicly. It's one thing to go through all, go through all these sort of programs and experience them all uh, without, but it's another thing to actually keep your head together and talk about it. And a lot of these people have been very badly damaged during the programs. So um, this, I mean, what happens is when you go out of body and you're there on a, from a military point of view, because one of the ways you travel to other worlds is you sort of extend your body into one made for you in the other planet wherever it is because our 3d works here but uh in order for you to work in a body that's going to work in the environment of, a, of another world you have to create that in the other world and then using a process called entanglement you then part of you goes to that other body right i mean the idea that you can get it, go into a tin can spaceship and land on some other planet and walk out and it's all happy happy I mean, we can't take more than a few tens of degrees of the difference in temperature. We can't take any kind of difference in air pressure. You know, we take a flight and it gets a bit too much for us because it's the air hurts our ears. We can't go into a bloody, we can't even dive in, a, in, in the ocean more than about 100 or three or 400 feet without having to bend when you come back. We're not that good at moderately small changes in temperatures and pressures. So the idea that we go into a tin can and you put a silver suit on and you walk into some other world, it doesn't work like that, okay? But there are ways of doing it, and it involves this gate technology, for want of a better term, 
which uh, was was acquired by John Irwin's team. And uh, that's something that Max just, uh, explained. There was the thing called the jump seat. You've seen that in Stargate and uh, Stargate Atlantis, where you get into this seat and you your genetics. One of the reasons why John Irwin, or the key reason why John Irwin was chosen to enter this specialized team called the 16, because of his genetics. And what happened in, in Britain is that we have a thing called the National Health Service. And the thing was that we got the German, we got the Nazi, um, the German, you know, medical people, super people, all this. We got the psyops people and the genetics people. There's a thing called the heel prick test that everybody has in when they're born in this country. And I think the British Isles, including Ireland and all that. There's a heel prick test just after birth, and they get the DNA of the mother and the child. They're not interested in the father. That goes into a database, which means every single child that's born is then available on a database. And then that's why certain people will knock on the door. Maybe when you're on a school holiday, you're taken out at school and then there'll be a little incident will be arranged. And then you might, you go into a base. You uh, don't actually remember that you've been in the base. And so that's how the likes of James and how the likes of Max were selected. And then you do your training and all that sort of stuff. So um, what happened in what happened just before the Polish uh, situation was that uh, I, I, uh, uh, this other person I won't name he uh, he did uh, he did something to cause trouble. So I took I I stepped back from the situation, and it was interesting that they gave me uh, a luxury apartment in the in the Hilton Hotel all by myself. I was isolated from the group. Uh, this other gentleman did his did his um, did his speech, did his thing at this conference, and uh, there was an awful lot of uh, odd behavior going around with the with the individual people. This brings in Stuart Swerdlow as well, and uh, we all basically uh, did our thing, and then we flew home, except for Max. And Max was on the phone to me a lot. Uh, he did an awful lot of. Uh, he in this little studio I've got here. Uh, the, I put Max on. I put all these people on as part of the basis thing, and also I think all the Amash thing way back in 20, 2010, 2011. So um, Max was meant to do a lot of very very heavy duty disclosure interviews here, and that didn't quite happen. So the final interview with Max um, happened here with uh, another person. Um, unfortunately, she's left us because she she um, it was it, she didn't want her name mentioned. But the the Max is the very pink lighting was actually here, so that was Max's last situation here. And um, so uh, the thing the thing about it is that's uh, you, see, you, you have you modeled yourself on Max. Me, me no 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 I, I people say i look like him that's funny you say that people say I well look i like just him. thought it but yeah. no, i you know I, I would say i'm more like an art bell like i cover i cover everything you yeah. Know what I mean? yeah all areas of the esoteric. art art is a great hero was great hero great guy and it was great to meet john lear and all that and uh i actually john asked me to interview him a couple of times the last time he did that super soldier summit or the last time i was there so anyway the bottom line is just covering this situation um max uh max would give me long phone calls we'd uh it's the sort of stuff that you talk about in the phones he covers so many detailed bits of information james uh he was um the whole thing fell apart really um james um married into a very prominent family the daughter was also trained at burnworthy manor uh, as part of the situation and uh, there's a lot of people involved. A lot of them uh, weren't in the public domain. But this other person who was very, had a striking look to King Edward VIII, the, the, abd the abdicated, the king that abdicated. And uh, I actually worked uh, with in a BBC with uh, a gentleman who had a striking resemblance to Edward VIII. And of course, he was one of the assets which were put in with me at the BBC. The BBC has got a lot of, well, it did, let's put it this way, it just doesn't do television and radio. 
And uh, I was involved with that whilst all this was happening. And um, so the bottom line is that Max didn't return with the rest of us. He didn't return back to England. And uh, he uh, was uh, helped with a very fine uh, lady there. She um, had actually offered to publish a lot of the basis material. Was The idea was to get a lot of the interviews and get that onto onto magazines uh, um, in, in various different languages in Europe. That was actually just used as a means to sweeten me up. So I'd talk to people and things over there in Poland. And the idea was that Max, Max, uh, Max stayed. And I was doing a lot of shows. Or I was helping out with uh, another MI6 asset called Christine Joanna Hart. And I think she still does a lot of shows uh, on... Um, I, I don't I don't think she's on Revolution Radio, but we did a, I did a lot of them on Revolution Radio, and uh, Max featured on quite a few of those, and um, he had stayed back. He'd stayed in in Poland, but had done one or two trips with this with fine lady. I think one of them was to Cyprus. I think well, it's Cyprus. I think it was where the yeah. I think it was yeah. Cyprus. There's not too many places in the world have a half hour time zone difference. Uh, uh, Halifax in Canada has a half hour time zone difference. And I wasn't sure why Crete would, or I think it's Crete, uh, has a half hour time zone. That's where there's a massive listing post for NATO and the British have a base there. So um, it was interesting that uh, Max would, would take a trip there. And uh, three days I think that was on the Thursday or maybe the wet, or maybe the Tuesday. Max called from there, and um, we had a very amusing, interesting call, and it was a good show. And um, then I was speaking at uh, Kerry Cassidy's conference in Central London, in East London, and Hackney. Uh, Kerry does a conference there every year, and I spoke at that. And when I finished doing my my talk, I got a text message. You got two text messages from the organizers of the conference uh, in Poland. And um, they just said, Max is dead. And that, that was the start of uh, a whole pile of events. Yeah, and, and, and uh, but, 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 but did, did you ever get any inside info as to what, I mean, do you think it was drugs or do you think it was a forced drug? Like, um, was it- the Max, was, was, Max was poisoned by, um, I mean, Let's make it absolutely clear. Uh, these guys were young people. They take their drugs, they get drunk, and they do their thing. Okay? So uh, I don't think anybody should uh, be hanging any sort of pious, uh, you know, awards of piety. You know, he, he wasn't, he didn't abstain. And so, so we we know all that, but there's important reasons why all that was happening. There's an awful lot was happening since that first, since that second super soldier summit uh which was hosted and uh, created by laurie and fenton who got quite a few guests and things for for art bell and uh, subsequently his successor Wait, which Miles, i appeared I on say, and james I, appeared on i just had to say something real quick I, I just i from my experience like people that do drugs they know their drugs like I'm, i mean because i i know I'm, I've, I've been around a lot of people in my life that you know so here's what i was thinking this is just my uh, analysis like I don't think Max wanted to kill himself, but I think like, I think like if he, if he knew his drugs, right. So like, what I'm trying to say is like, um, it would have to be poison because like he would have known not to take a certain amount that would have killed him. It, that that just makes sense. Right. I, I don't know. I, that, 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 Max was poisoned with um, two types of uh, deadly venom. Uh, one was, uh, no, I might get this wrong. One was, um, African snake a uh, death at her venom. And the other one was, Af I think African scorpion venom. Okay. The same, the same, the same drugs were used on me. Uh, when I was, um, uh, poisoned on a, on a, on a Aer Lingus flight in, um, that landed in Dublin, but they, 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 um, they got on, they got me to touch it with slow acting. And it was about three days later, uh, I, I erupted with all this stuff. I won't go into the details. Uh, the doctor was quite interesting when I managed to get to see the doctor on my return. He said, uh, well, if it goes for your throat, go for accident and emergency. 
because then it'll kill you. You know, that's warm, warm friend, more friendly advice. You know, I'm completely covered with this stuff, which is reacting very badly. And then subsequently after that, I got a little phone call from somebody in a Romanian accent. And he says, you are meant, you are not meant to survive that, you know. You know, the old sort of phone call sort of saying, oh you, you know, you're meant to be dead. You know, the old sort of, you know, you know, you get it all the time. So um, Max was poisoned with a thing which was designed. Basically, Max was a British military asset as a super soldier. Okay. What they wanted to do was to kill him, get him past death in the same way they described that John Irwin way back in 1957 he joined at the age of, uh, the, he was conscripted into the British Army. They brought him past death using particular techniques. Uh, and so they were able to program John Irwin with a particular fighting technique, which would mean that you would it would be part of your immediate instincts. I mean, when you blink your eye or when you move your hands, you don't have to think, I need to blink my right eye, right? It's part of your fundamental instincts. So John Irwin was programmed in 1957 to be a fighting, immense, immensely powerful fighting technique with such fast re reflexes, which he demonstrated to Egyptian special forces when he when he came out and, and he started talking to me and another guy called Richard D. Hall uh, in the north of England. So Max was part of this. He'd been programmed with something. So what they needed to do was they needed to bring Max so he would die and he says that in the last interview, he said, I was gone. I'd gone. I'd left my body. So when you hear Max say that, he's come back, okay? And he's been reanimated, okay? That's the te technical term. So Max, um, so they had tried, so what they wanted to do was find out what his mission was and what, his, what, his, what they programmed him with find that out, extract that information, change his uh, programming, reanimate him, bring him back. And that's why his last interview was not on camera, except for one time when they reanimated him. And one of the ways uh, after you've been dead and you come back in, one of the things you need to do is you need to gently re connect your body your your systems with you so um what they did was they 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 got him to bounce on a on a trampoline so so max was really groggy and he was going up and down so that means you you bounce up and down and you gently get all the body sort of working again it shakes all the all the stuff out uh of you know of, of when you when the body shuts down it starts but so they so they reanimated him. That was when, in my estimation, looking at this, that was when they were saying the package is ready for collection. We have we've done it. We brought him back. He's there. He is bouncing, ready. Okay. Whatever happened, Max then started to vomit black, a black substance, and this is this is this is uh, this is all in the. I mean, everybody knows this, but uh, when you have somebody in your care and he's vomiting a black substance and he's extremely ill and you don't call any emergency services, you don't sort of, you just sort of don't do anything basically. So um, finally, when he was very seriously ill, they finally did call an ambulance and the uh, ambulance and the police people who wanted to get in were stopped from coming because they couldn't get access. And shortly after that, he then actually died on the sofa. Now, the policeman involved with that has been has gone missing. I cooperated with the BBC uh, program about all this. Uh, people criticised me for that. Uh, I know the BBC. I have taken... Uh, I've been on TV since I've been at Fifth Form. So I'm, I'm front of house, so to speak. So... Um, the problem, the photograph of Max when he died soon afterwards saw a black spot on his on his forehead, which had started to spread quite rapidly. 
So Max was dead, dead. Now, what happened that night, once I got the text messages from, from Poland, there was, a, there was a decision to try and recover Max for the second time. So they worked on him for about, and I've interviewed one of the people who actually was part of that and who explained and went past further on where Max had gone to. He'd gone to a great meeting, a great meetup with, with Knights Templars when he left his body. And uh, they actually went to ask permission, could they recover Max back? So whilst all this was going on, Max did come back and he stood there beside and could see what was happening. So he could see if he did go back into his body for the second time, what he would then face. So then he decided to leave and then go and stay with the whatever was going on on the other side with those Knights Templars. And Max then died, died. And what happened after that was... Uh, I was uh, I at that point when I I had to phone two people I had to find Vanessa's number which is Max's mother and at the phone Sarah and I had to tell them that Max was dead and after that it was just horrendous so that was that was the situation Vanessa then had great difficulty in recovering Max and uh, actually had to drive him from Poland the the, or have him driven, the amount of paperwork you have to do to move a dead body is unbelievable. If you want to get a body from England and you want to get it to Wales, which is part of Britain and you know Great Britain, the amount of effort, the amount of paperwork you've got to do to, uh, to just to administer and get that done is incredible. So about a month later, Max finally uh, arrived in the UK, and it was fairly clear that there would be um, uh, a public inquiry. The public inquiry would poo-poo that and cover the whole thing up, like a lot of public inquiries, which is really what public inquiries are about, or coroner's inquiry. And basically, they just want to get an administrative uh, signed a, 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 a death certificate and say that you know he, he died of a drugs overdose or something. That just sorts it all out. The BBC asked me on the air to um, on Radio 4 to explain what happened, and they allowed me to say what I've just told you, that he was some kind of part of a military program which involved fighting beyond death, because they do, and that was uh, in respect to John Irwin, who's the, the spokesman of that team going back to the 50s. John Irwin's still around. And you wouldn't want to tackle John, John Irwin at his age, let alone at the age he was at when he was fighting fit. He's really the fighting technique they, they, they use is absolutely incredible. So the bottom line was uh, that was Max. Uh, at the same time, James Casbolt uh, was then uh, essentially, it was part of the plan that he would then go to jail and then that would have press coverage. The, the, the plan for James to be painted in the as a bad guy and have all that stuff was part of the plan to get this into the newspapers. James explained that to me. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, when James was actually in jail, was was being a big bust up between Max and James. Uh, uh, Max actually had quite some sympathy because once you're in there, they expose you to all sorts of things. And my understanding as of this week is that James Casbolt in 2019, when he should have been, released from the local jail here, Earlstoke Jail. I've been forbidden to see him ever again. He's been forbidden to have any contact with anybody in the basis thing, any of the super soldiers or whatever. And uh, he uh, was released into the germ war warfare labs, uh, Porton Down. And the only thing that we could think why he's been released into that is that they want to do some kind of enhanced transhumanization of him because the Ministry of Defence has now said publicly, it's on their website, it's called human aug the Human Augmentation Program. So that's officially on the Ministry of Defence site. Now, when James Casbolt spoke at the uh, bases at the Barge, which I think was about 2015, there was a film crew by a company called Red and Black Films now, anybody who knows anything about black magic, anything about black magic or that kind of thing, the colors red and black are important. That's why the poppy uh, on November the 11th, all these people go and wear these black 
uh, the, the red and black poppies, because all the souls who've been killed in battle, including right up to the way that the war memorials are actually designed, is to entrap all those souls. So when you sign up and go to war, you are volunteering and you are signing up a deal that the Rothschilds will use you in soul harvesting with all all those implications which which happened and that was explained in great detail by an mi6 uh, uh former mi6 asset called tim refat tim standing for T total intent manifest and we did that in brighton uh where he described why and how the war memorials are designed to maintain the souls tra uh, trapped in those mom on, in those structures using those as a form of uh, black magic. So where are we? We're, yeah. We've even gone 49 minutes. Um, can I just ask you one, one more question real quick? And, and this is it. Yeah. Um, but this was from my view, my viewer, Louisa. She wanted to ask you, um, she, she, this was a big question. She said that some of the viewers are saying that, um, they felt a big positive shift lately. Do you have any explanation of what that is going on behind the scenes on that and what contributed to that, if, if she's right? Oh, like, oh, okay, well, uh, there's another character who's come online since basically this whole thing started happening. She's Elena Denan. There's another character called uh, Kimberly Guggen. And there's another good old uh, uh, asset uh, in Japan called uh, Benjamin Fulford. They're, they're putting out a lot of information. And you've got to remember that when these people speak they are not necessarily speaking to you. Tim Refat did a whole pile of, I did a whole pile of interviews with them. These continued when he left the UK and uh, into, into Vietnam. When they're talking, they can frequently only need to be talking to one or two people. Okay. So a huge thing happened on July the 12th. The whole war thing, the, this fiasco uh, stopped. Uh, you can see the NATO photographs of uh, the the NATO uh, people completely shunning that other individual. So whatever has got been going on with that war, that something stopped there. Something big happened. So there has been a major change in things, and it won't won't be we won't actually see a lot of that. This is still a war. It's still a war for human beings to actually do things and to make it absolutely clear. Any psychological or esoteric limits on human beings are off. You now all have the power to infinitely manifest and have in, in use the powers that you were all uh, born with as human beings. One of the key things I've interviewed with several interviews in, in the last year is abductees. They've gone through all the terrible target individual stuff, all the bases and all that sort of stuff. They can say, right, I want to see Saturn's rings. Bingo. They can go and see Saturn's rings and come back. We have supreme power and manifestation, which is what the enemy wants to use. They want to limit us, imprison us, box us, and get us to manifest reality for them. So that's it. So it's like it's, did it's, that it's, answer the question? What was the question? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's about are we on a more of a positive timeline? Like, are we have we seen a shift? Like, kind of. And it's like, yeah, there has been like a huge shift, and order. it's it's up to us, every individual person. I want to get this really. It's really important. Every individual person may feel there's such a huge problem out there. The thing they use against us is fear, and then you pull your horns in. You say, "Oh, I'm afraid." Don't be afraid. Powered and do it get out there okay you may only have this little function or a little thing there or a little thing you know whatever you do your bit that you can do nobody can you know a rome wasn't built in a day you know a lot of bricks makes a, a big wall so get out there and do it as best as you can your little bit that's what's important the other thing i say do not believe in any of thing any of this stuff Look at it, understand it, take it on board, but don't outsource your belief system to some kind of de deity or love and light. The love and light community with the best will in the world is a psyop to disarm people who are waking up. So they think, oh, well, that was something else. They, it, we've got to get over that. We, we are empowered. We are wonderful. 
get on and make a beautiful world. Uh, well, that's really well said. Well, I know you're really busy, so I, I don't want to take any more of your time. Yeah, I'm, I'm very busy. Yeah, I'm busy yeah, I, thinking this. Well, I appreciate talking. you doing this today and taking your time out to talk to us. Um, is it? Let me just ask you this before we go off: Is there anything else you would like to cover, or, or anything else you want to say? Well, basically, honest? I was deplatformed along with, uh, you know, way back in twenty, whatever the hell it was. I mean, I'm doing this. I've been doing this. Uh, I've been with the pirate radio thing. I mean, I never believed that I could actually get a 1.2 megawatt pirate station on the Irish border broadcasting. Uh, we, I was able to do that get a team together, do a many amazing things. You have the power, go and do it, maintain your focus and set your goals and maintain them. That's really Do well good said. things. Yeah. Um, well, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you? And thank you for doing well, that. right, right now uh, we've got, I've actually got people who are helping me. I've uh, been basically a one man band. I've had a couple of really good volunteers helping things over the years all unpaid, have a deplatformed, no money's coming in. So it's been really, really difficult. So we're now basically, uh, it's been taken about, about two years to relaunch a lot of the interviews. And they're all over the place because I've been shooting over the last, you know, since 94, whatever. And um, nothing's really cataloged properly. So there's a guys now who are putting this together in blocks of series in a way that you can watch it. And it's basestv.com. That's that's fascinating. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's that's basically been relaunched as a TV thing. So we have to buy an awful lot of hours to upload all that. And uh, I'm asking people to subscribe, which I haven't done before. I've asked for donations, but I, I feel, you know, when somebody has been tortured or have all this stuff that happened to them, I, I felt that, you know, nobody gets paid, but I, you do need to have things to make things happen. And that's... That subscription, we've had the first two subscriptions this week. So the idea is to get this platform working. There's a lot of people working in the background to try and do that. And um, I'm just going to do what I do, and they're going to do what they do, and let's hope it's going to be successful. We must break through this media thing. That's why in 1963, a boat had to sail into the Irish Sea to play a couple of records. That's how, that's how seriously oppressive and completely controlled britain is you're not allowed to play a record so we went and did pirate radio off ships and did it then people should look at that why do you have to get a ship sail it into international rec into international waters to play a record that's sort of weird that is that's really that just shows you kind of the oppression and the censorship so we've had we've had youtube uh to, do, to help us do all that. But now YouTube's been identified as a, as a loose, a loose harvester. Because if you notice where they put their ads and I don't, I know you're on YouTube right now, but you know, this is, you don't get anything for free in this business. So they have an agenda and uh, having been, uh, you know, deplatformed a few times, but the main thing is, uh, is to create, be positive and bring happiness and fulfillment to, pe to people and your own lives. Yeah, can I tell you? I real, real quick. I talked to Dolly Indigo Star, and she. Ah, oh, you know Dolly. Dolly. Yeah, we I, we did it. Yeah, Michael, why didn't you say you you knew Dolly? Yeah, I. We've she done sent me together, about right? five hundred text messages today that I had to do this, 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 and this with a whole pile of love hearts in it. Dolly's brilliant. Yeah, we we. I'll tell you, we just filmed a, an episode. I did a, an interview with her, but it didn't come out right, so we're going to re-record it. But there's another one on my channel that I've done Good. with her. She's a, she's a wealth of knowledge on the Anunnaki. Yeah. she's amazing. Yeah. Like, I love Dolly. Well, she, the key the key to the whole that a lot of that Anunnaki stuff was Chris Thomas, and he explained a lot of that stuff. He's a Welsh healer, and uh, he woke up with a with a hypodermic in him. And he suffered uh, very badly from that, but he managed to recover. And I managed to get an interview with him in 20, uh, 2010 and another brilliant uh, Norwegian uh, filmmaker called Terry A. Toftenus. That's T-E-R-J-I, Terry A. It's Terry in Norwegian. Uh, he filmed uh, him as well. And uh, that's the only time the key to, the, the key to, uh, I don't know, I, the key to, Chris's information is that he had a direct line with the Akashic and knows where this whole thing about the, the Anunnaki uh, and the six or seven races, which came from 
the Velos system. And that that's a whole another story. But uh, he, I think he passed away. A lot of the people I get, if you don't, they're not around afterwards, you know, I'm sure you'll be okay. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. I, I hope so. That, that doesn't, I, that I'm, I, I don't know. Though. You never know in this business, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Um, You know, if people want to donate to you, like if they want to, is, do you have a, a, a place where people can donate? I can put the uh, There's the old website, uh, thebasisproject.org has a donate button and that goes straight into, into my business account, which is all is accounted for and have to, you know, you know, show it all up, you know, what it's doing. And we are doing subscriptions once we, once Dolly is working very hard and her friend, um, I don't want to mention too many names, but he's working really hard to get, we only got the basis.com and basis.org uh, formally registered about a week ago. So we're right at the very start of this. And uh, that's what I'm spending my time to get it. I, I shoot these things and then edit them. And then I get, and then suddenly get another one and another one and organizing it has never really been done properly. So, um, and then for instance, basis one, which was 1994, uh, we have somebody turning up and, uh, like 20 years, 30 years later, a beautiful woman called Sophie. She was born on the baby farms of Southern Africa. And, uh, she has been in the underground tunnels with the Alfred Draconis, but a lot has changed in months, weeks, all the old stuff about reptilians and all that and the greys. Things are changing by the week sometimes. So we really have to keep our ears to the ground and uh, things are moving fast. And we are part of that. You, everybody, ordinary people, we are the front line. So we are part of this whole thing. All of us, all races, all over the world, we are part of this. So let's make it happen. That sounds, that sounds good. Well, again, uh, thank you, Miles, for doing this. This was amazing. And, uh, yeah, I, I just it was really good information uh, about Max and uh, and every <clears throat> and everything else, and I and thank you for answering the viewer questions too. Good, good. Yes, well that's it. Good. I don't right, have well, much opportunity you. to listen to that, but I'm busy. I've got to go. I've got to finish the coffee, and that's okay. the secret space program there. Yeah, that's so complicated. That's the smallest you can see it. It's such a complicated diagram. Uh, a that's an A zero, I think. It's that's the smallest you can actually print it to actually read any of it. And they What's see us say? at the bottom. This is if you see that at the bottom, if if you're able to read it, they the plan is oh god, there right there at the bottom is humanity leaving the solar system this century. We've got less than 75 years before we leave the solar system. That's the plan. So there, yeah, there it is. That's amazing. Oh, and don't forget, guys, uh, if you can support the podcast, I usually have links in the description, uh, but it's really easy. It's paypal.me slash typical skeptic media, or you can buy me a coffee. It's buymeacoffee.com slash typical skeptic. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, um, and, but I, I'd like you to support my guests first to support Basis TV. And yeah, just thank you again, Miles. This was amazing. I'm so glad that we were able to do this. And uh, yeah. thank you for taking time out of your busy day to talk. To yeah, very, me. very busy. I've, I've done that bad joke already. <laughs> it's okay. You, 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 I like when people bring humor to, to yeah. the... Uh, well, I, I used to have hair. I've been told Dolly wants me to cut the hair. So I'm really short and have short hair. I'm, I think you're with good people and you're with Dolly. Yeah. She seems like a really cool person. She, yeah, uh, but she's got boom, 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 and that's what you got to have. And we yeah. had boom, boom, boom with uh, with the Amash project, but that was very sad the way that was sort of uh, beached by Channel 4 uh, 10 years ago. That's available on Netflix. And an even better program, I am I was on The Great UFO Conspiracy. That was, that was good fun. Max is actually in that one. That was filmed in 2015, months before they, they, they murdered him. Max was assassinated. He did not commit suicide, and it was not a drug overdose, okay? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree. I, I, one thing, uh, we don't have time. I, I'll ask you. I'll have to bring you back because I have more stuff I want to ask okay. you. Okay, back rude. after the break, and I'll have a different coffee. I'll have a different mug. <laughs> oh, the basis uh, mug. That's I'm going to get one of those. Those are cool. That's so cool. 
a home for dissident sciences. And that's a reference to the great Vladimir Tzitzky. He did some really, really good stuff in the 80s and the 90s. Of, and he, he was an Austrian. I'm familiar yeah. with him. He made some really good UFO doc like stuff. He right? did. He, he did all the original interviews with the on the Montauk stuff, uh, and all those guys there have all passed on. Peter Moon is doing <laughs> some hugely fantastic books, uh, which is all connect with all that. So there's a lot happening. That's awesome. Well, um, thank you so much, uh, Miles. And I'm, uh, and yeah, and I'm even, I'm going to send Dolly the link to this. So she, well, uh, I, I've got another camera working there. It is. That's one of my other studios there. It's, oh, uh, that's cool. about oh, half a I mile. You've got the real Anthony Fauci there. I had to, br yeah. I had to bring that, I had to bring that in by, by, uh, satellite there. That's cool. bro. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. I, yeah. yeah. I've got a satellite dish here, but just, you know, but one more thing on your secret space program diagram. Is that like the British secret space program? No, that's actually that? by Rockwell. Uh, that's by Rockwell. It's integrated. It's the integrated space program. Uh, February, 1989. It's got secret space. It's got pe country space programs. I mean, I didn't even know we had one. Of course the British have one. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys, but we were like basically the, the the makers of our country. So, like, you got you guys would have it above us. You guys have the Tavistock in, in industry. Yeah, right? we have the Tavistock Institute. We have peas more. And actually, uh, I'm thinking of doing an alien base tour here in Wiltshire. You can do crop circle tours, but um, practically most of the bases around here have got some kind of alien signature involved because the aliens are involved with them. I mean, if you go into, if you go into these places and you do going to, you know, go to work, you know, a Frimley Manor, Farnborough, Grays were walking around there, having a look at the whole, uh, you know, the drawing office, you know, we didn't have computers. You had the things, the main secret drawing office, April, 1974 for crying out loud. That's awesome. So, I mean, that's what no defense significance means because they're in the bloody back office working with us. It's no defense significance. So this alien disclosure crap, we work with them, you know, on the on the lunar base. Yeah, it's it's already going on. That's and that's, that's years ago. I mean, they've developed the uh, programmed life forms, you know, with the German uh, biology technology to, to work on the on the lunar base. That's Britain's lunar base. Yeah. Whatever it is. You gotta get that right. I think that's I think that's navy or that's oh God. if you get it <laughs> wrong, you're on a charge. Yeah. Where you goddamn Americans just do this here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you say how how are you? You know, how how are you? You know? Yeah. Anyway, Art Bell, brilliant. I loved Art Bell. People really need to hear his original shows. It's well worth hearing those shows. He had the voice, he had the technique, and he really knew what he was talking about because he was a radio amateur and he knew what all the technology meant so he could ask the really good questions. And I used to be able to listen to him here, but that's George Nori. And uh, there's a big conference here in uh, in Manchester, really. It's in Salford. It's got uh, Jimmy Church and we've got... Um, a big thing. I think, I don't know who it's, it's, it's not Zohar, but it's a big, these conferences have got these stupid titles like the uh, awakening awareness conference or the, or the, whatever, you know, you can't call it a UFO conference. It's a CIA. Uh, if you'll go on a charge, you're a threat to security. If you mention the word UFO, UFO. And I don't mm -hmm. mean unidentified flying object CIA. They want you to say UAP now, you know, it's, it's so funny. I don't know why that is. Like, I feel like UAP is like a CIA term, maybe, or, or, or maybe it's a government listen, term. For sure. I'll, I'll, uh, let's, let's just talk to the CIA and all these other gobshites. There's one thing you never do. You never believe your own PowerPoint presentation. You've <laughs> got to keep objective. Yeah. All these guys they wheel up. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, I excerpt. Whoa, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that didn't work. Well, we got another one. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Look at my, look at my medals. There's all square jawed, square jawed assholes, and they're all from the CIA. Maybe they want to, you know, maybe they want to get a different director. I think the other thing that they had, which was was fifty million dollar farce. A very big fan of dark journalists. He's fantastic.
I love dark journalists. I yeah. love the. I love to he's, get him he's on my. He's working shows. really hard. I met him at the Secret Space Program, a conference way back in some place called Bullstrode near uh, Texas or some some place in Texas. He really comes with some good information, dark journalist. He I would works say very he hard. Works, he seems a little that, skeptical, but like I mean, I'm skeptical too. But I, I mean, but like I think he's open minded. I am. I am too. You know, like I, I'm, you should I, be spe- skeptical. Don't believe it. Just see where one person's baloney can subtly make sense when somebody speaks maybe 10 years later. So just, or somebody's lie can sometimes reveal more than if they just went and told the truth straight, straight on. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I'll have to charge you for this now. (laughs) <laughs> all right well we've got we've got okay, well, good. thank you everybody for good. tuning in and remember maya said in the chat if you guys want to donate you can donate to the paypal or buy me a coffee you don't have to do a super chat but like thank you maya for doing that she's going to give away a free session to anybody who donates we do it at the end of the month we're going to start doing our end of the month podcast where we have a, a group panel discussion and then we announce the contest winner at the end it's really cool i mean the first one turned out great so all right. And thank you, Miles, and support bases. And and thank you, everybody. Um, well, thank you. It's been a hard run. Thank you for being there. And remain skeptical. Don't believe it. But at the same time, don't become what we call a septic, which is our rude word for skeptics. Yeah, exactly. Because you don't want to be <laughs> you want to be skeptical, but not a cynic or not a debunker. Or not well, a you can debunker. be a cynic. At least you got some humor there. But uh, don't yeah. be a septic. Septic. I like that. Yeah, the I, I don't want to start calling myself typical septic, but I'm not, <laughs> all right. Thanks. Well, there's mom. another beautiful lady called Miss Hepsis. You've got to take care of what she's saying. Uh, who? I've never heard of her. Uh, Sandra Droy. She's very talented, uh, brilliant film, uh, a bit hot to handle many times, but she's called Miss Sepsis. She, we did a few presentations here in my little studio, and she's come up with some really heavy stuff about what they're planning for us. And make oh, no Lord. mistake about it, they are planning terrible things and we must face them down. I've said enough. Okay, good night. <laughs>